God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. I want to congratulate Pastor uh, when he was giving his report on being at the conference. We all have to remember this is his first anniversary with us. <laughs> you didn't mention you have been appointed for another year <laughs> here. I mean, this is the time that they make those announcements, isn't it? <laughs> Don't worry. Have you ever worried about what direction we're going to go at the end? This reminds me of the story of the taxi cab driver and the pastor. They were talking about where, which direction they were going to go. The cabbie was telling the story about the rewards that he would receive. Uh, he had a very strong feeling that he would be up in heaven, a high hill, big castle, silk robe. Pastor, you're going to be in a little shack down in the valley wearing cotton robes. Pastor, well, wait a minute, what, what kind of deal is that? For 30 years I've been preaching God's word and telling his, his story and teaching. Cabby said, yeah, while you were doing that, your congregants were sleeping. When I was driving my passengers around town very rapidly, they were praying out loud for their survival and their salvation. Hopefully we won't find you napping today. <laughs> These past weeks, uh, the theme of Pastor Sojong's uh, messages have been about Jesus and his unique way of teaching and using his surroundings to illustrate his point. Today's scripture lesson should stimulate our imagination and your imagination to see that it is spring. It's spring out here in Galilee as well. Jesus had no rows of chairs to set up. He had no pulpit to stand behind to deliver his message. <clears throat> we know it's springtime because the grass has turned green, the wild flowers have burst into display of colors. Jesus can see the flowers, he can hear the birds, and they provide him with food for thought. We worry about our food, our clothes, we worry about our homes and how we're going to fit into society. We worry about the weather. We worry about the car we drive. We worry about the taxes that we have to pay. We worry about our health. We worry about our income and so forth. You get the idea, don't you? We do a lot of worrying. Some of these things we have control over, and that depends on the decisions that we make. But a lot of these things we have no control over. Many times we worry just for the sake of worrying. The answer lies first in striving for the kingdom of God. A kingdom not of power, not of might, but a, a kingdom of mercy, justice, and grace. It is a kingdom of forgiveness, of love, where prejudice is unheard and pride and conceit just do not exist. It is a kingdom where greed is absent. How do, you how do you feel or find peace of mind? How do we empty our minds of all worry, fear, and resentment? The pain of this is mixed in this mixed up world. How do we find that peace that Christ promises us? One man said that he had been told that one way to achieve inner peace is to finish things already started. He said, today I finished two bags of potato chips and a chocolate cake. <laughs> it gave me some temporary peace and helped me to relieve some stress, but not my waistline. But when Christ shows up, he gives us peace. The point here is that when Christ comes into your life, he gives you peace. It's a peace with God that is based on his sacrifice, on the cross. The prophet Isaiah declares in Isaiah 26, 3, Thou wilt keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because your trust is in thee. He gives us peace. He gives us power. He gives us lasting purpose, and he gives us grace. 
To this our purpose, we are to be the mouth to speak for Jesus, feet to run his errands, hands to do the work of Jesus, and the heart to love Jesus. But we are forgetting God's role in our lives and our, li and our role in depending on God. Henry Ford once said, and I quote, I believe God is managing affairs and that he doesn't need any advice from me. Everything will work out to the best in the end. So with God in charge, what is there to worry about? Unquote. We worry about things in our lives we cannot see. It was Julius Caesar who said, as a rule, men worry more about what they can't see than what they can see. And yet, according to St. Augustine, faith is believing what you cannot see and reward of faith is seeing what you have believed. Thus, we can say, faith begins when worry ends. Worry and anxiety are synonymous in this 21st century. It's the curse of the 21st century. Remember that old Broadway stage uh, line by George Asaph? Quote, what's the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So pack up your kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Getting our thinking right is what's important in life. After all, both John the Baptist and Jesus began their preaching ministries with the word repent. What does it mean to repent? We think it is asking for forgiveness. But in reality, repent means to change our thinking. Change and develop a new way of thinking. To turn from our old way of thinking, which is worry, and devote yourself to the kingdom thinking. Epictus stated there is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our skill. Worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. We often find ourselves striving to prepare for the future, for tomorrow, without living in the present. The present is right now. It's being right now it's being authentic now. It's being in the present. The truth of the matter for all of us is that uh, the present, if we live the present well lived, profiting from our mistakes of the past and with a purposeful future that we are able to strive for the kingdom of God. <coughs> Excuse me. God knows our needs before we never ask him or ever ask him. He hears our wants. When we want, when our wants are shaped, <coughs> excuse me, when our wants are shaped into God's will, then we begin to think about our future in the kingdom and not worry about things that never happen. Jesus reminds us, strive first his kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be given to you. <coughs> today's struggle is enough for today. Today, well lived is what God wants us all to do. And as today's scripture in verse 34 tells us, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles are enough for today. Let us pray. <coughs> Great God, I trust you for today, for this moment, for this present that we have. The present is a gift from you that each of us in our lives must use it to its very best. Help us to seek first the kingdom right now, in the present. Fill our lives with kingdom throughout thought so that every day of every tomorrow is better because our today has been lived well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.